Beckman Unleashed podcast number 18. We are live. All right. You ready? You ready, guys? Let's not waste any time. Okay. No, no, no. In true Beckman style. Separation anxiety is the topic that I'm going to talk about. I don't think I've ever made a dedicated video to it. We're going to do it here today. Our vaunted breed of the week. Yes. Which people love. The apology segment and then comment. And the thing I'm excited most about is going through some videos and wild animal videos, showing them, I yeah. think, and then we're going to talk about them. And then also for the people that are just listening to the podcast, can you tell them that you're wearing a hat? Yeah, I'm wearing a hat because my I wore it all day and my hair's messed up. Okay. Um, looks pretty good, look, man. Does it look all right? Looks, doesn't look bad. Looks like it's a working hat, though. Yeah, it's in the sun hat. My daughter, my kids surf. This is the company, Visla, that my daughter is sponsored by. She's a sponsored surfer. It's a solid She's girl. sponsored by Sister. Which is owned by Visla, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not the dog. And don't Vizla hold. Visla or something. Don't right? hold. What? Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Visla. That's why on a video, you'll hear me say, oh, it's a Visla. And like, also, and I'll be, I mean, Visla. 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 Because I'm used to saying. Where's Visla from thing? before we dive into this? The dog? Yeah, is it like Austria? Hungary? Okay, that's close. Austria. Hung yeah, you were close. All right. All right, we're wasting too much time, man. Let's get right into the separation, separation anxiety. anxiety. Okay, separation anxiety. Ready? Separation anxiety is a superstitious behavior. You may have never heard that term. I learned about it in school in terms of it's people stuff, but also animal stuff. It's a behavior that's accidentally reinforced. Okay? So if you walk by and you look in the trash can and you find $100, Guess what you're going to do every time, trash can? every time you walk by that trash can, you're going to like look in that life. trash can. It's pretty silly to look in a trash can and assuming you're going to do that again. Makes no sense, really. But you found a hundred dollars in there. You accidentally reinforced. Now you keep looking in the trash can. Okay. That's what separation anxiety is. Often your dog's whining and crying. You forgot your keys. You walk back in the house and the dog goes, holy mackerel. They're back. My crying got that lady back. And that lady is the greatest single thing in the history of the world. And that crying got her back. I'm going to keep crying and she will eventually come back, of which you don't. But the reinforcement was so heavy. The few times you did, you, you implanted something in their brain that makes them think that their whining and crying got you back. That is in part what separation anxiety is, is, is from. Not all the time. You could say, well, you just never left your dog. It was a normal dog, but you never left. And then you left one day and it didn't like it. But it can be a, a learned behavior through superstitious behaviors. Okay. Hmm. That's There's, interesting about the superstition part. Right now. Because I, I like to bust out big uh, training terms sometimes that no one knows. Well, think about like if somebody, you're like, well, hey, if I do this and the Patriots are going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, right? there you go. You're like, dude, that... In your mind, you believe it could be true, but obviously it's not. And you hope it's true, but you can kind of go, well, I know this is just kind of superstitious, but guess what the dog, the dog has no concept of superstition. They literally think their behavior did something. Neither do humans really. I mean, some don't. I mean, yeah, we give people too much credit sometimes. Yeah. So, the, so, okay. Enough with why we don't care why we care how to fix it. Right. That's the pod. The pod is about Can results. You explain like a couple of examples though, before we get into that. Thank you. I think this will answer your question. There's mild, medium, and severe separation anxiety. Is that an example? No. No. Okay. I'll give you an example. All right. I get the, I get the person like wanting their mom to come home. Is there anything else? Of separation anxiety? Yeah. Well, they, the behaviors are, okay, let me get into this. Then I'll answer your question. Okay. Mild is normal stuff. Many dogs have mild separation anxiety. Most puppies have mild separation anxiety. It's totally normal. My, we bought a crate, like it was a, it was a thick, soft crate. It wasn't a hard crate, but I was like, it's thick, like canvas, like seatbelt material when we had Bosco. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is a cool crate, soft. It wasn't wired and wasn't plastic. I was like, this is cool. He won't be able to get out of this. We came home, we tore out the side of the crate. I was like, oh my broke God. Out. Yeah, I broke out. I mean, it's, he's a dog, right? Dogs have very strong jaws. So anyway, my, my, Bosco, who you might think is the greatest dog ever seen on the internet, if you haven't, go back on my channel. You could make that argument. Um, had mild separation anxiety when he was a puppy because puppies have it. Then there's medium. So it's just whining and barking when you're young or whining and barking for a minute when you leave, right? That's normal stuff. Me medium, 
would be anything more severe, like panting, barking for an hour, um, panting, running around the house, destroying things. You know, your puppy getting a roll of toilet paper when you're gone is puppy behavior. He, he, he might do that when you're there, right? Not separation anxiety or mild. Medium would be a little more severe than severe is breaking their teeth on a crate, tearing through a door, finding a puddle of saliva from the dog, just sitting at the door, panting for six hours, um, jumping out of balconies. I worked, I worked with a dog who jumped off the balcony, jumping through windows. Um, it wasn't your dog barking for six hours. It was not my dog. Um, that's severe. And that is get ready for it, a mental illness. Mm. It's a true mental illness. Why is that important? Think about a mental illness and then think about a fix for a mental illness. Fixes take years men for mental illnesses. Ser serious separation, separation anxiety is a mental illness. It falls in that category, in my opinion. One reason I know that, go ask a trainer and look them in the eye and try to read if they're telling the truth or if any trainer says I have a fix for separation, anxiety, severe, they are lying. I think I have the best fix out there and I'm going to tell it to you. Nobody has a perfect fix. So in you the can't same solve way, this in one session? You No. Yeah, that's exactly right. This is not right. a quick fix ever. No trainer has a quick fix. I guarantee it to you. Okay? Kids right. have separation, anxiety. Kids. Crying for they their do, mom. They do. Crying for the mom. Yeah. The bedtime deal we talked about last week. Hmm. All right. I believe that they that the internet, if you look it up, focuses on what I'm going to call the small fixes, and they do not focus on what I believe are the big fixes. So I'm going to go through the big fixes, then we're going to get to what you read a lot. Here's the big fixes. It's threefold. Ready? It is exercise before you leave. That is talked about by other people. It is also leaving for progressively longer periods of time. That is very important. Or even doing a sit stay while you go out of the room. So your dog is like, oh, she's not in my eyesight. That's small, but it's important Okay, for serious separation anxiety. But where I think a lot of nobody focuses on, which is what I believe is the biggest fix, is reinforcement when you're gone. The greatest thing in the history of the world to that dog just walked out the door. We have to have give the dog the second greatest thing in the history of the world. When I first had Bosco, my puppy, 15 years ago, we would take a food filled frozen Kong, a marrow bone, and a bully stick, and we would leave it for him when we left. When I tell people that who had dogs have separation anxiety, nobody's ever gone, Oh, yeah, we do that. Ever. Hmm. They go, Oh, really? That many things? Yeah, that many things. It's like Why on, not do more things? Who cares? It's like going on vacation and leaving your wife like a pile of cash. You're like, here you go. Yeah. I'll be yeah. Hey, you, you went on vacation. Bro, you were smart. He, he goes away on like a trip, True. hunting trip. And, and you go, yeah. And I, I, you had help for your wife to like, uh, you brought someone in and paid the person. And I, also, I was like, I wonder why I can never leave. Cause I never think to do that. Like, I, I've never thought of that. I'm like, <laughs> I've never left really, but. Well, I think I also got her a spa. Exactly. Deal. So it was more of a bribe, this, but same idea as your Same idea. Thing. Same idea. Give them something good. Make them. Ma I wanted to walk in and have my dog go, Hey, what's up, bro? Like, like I got the greatest things here ever. Now that was sort of proactive, but this can be reactive too. So you might say, well, Joel, my dog doesn't want a marrow bone when I leave. Well, guess what? You got to drop the dog's diet. You got to drop his diet? What does that mean? Drop his base diet. Oh, you give oh, your dog he's four cups of food. You, you got to make him Hungry into, eat, right? you got to, there you go. Now there are separation anxiety that's so severe. The dog could be starving and not be into that. I get it. That's why I have two other things on here and not just one thing, but you can't. Not only can you not discount the reinforcement part, you have to actively try to get what else is going to give your dog joy when the greatest thing in the world left. Tell me. I'm open to it. If it ain't food, here's why food is good. Here's why treats are good. Here's why not treats when you leave, but just treats on a walk because you can control reinforcement. There's, there's something called primary reinforcement. It's shelter, food, water, and some say sexual behavior. 
Okay. These are the three things people and animals need to live. I guess oxygen too, but you can't non-environmental. Yeah. Yeah. Like they need shelter. Those are primary. Secondary would be like money. Cash is a secondary reinforcer. Petting is a secondary reinforcer. Talking is a secondary reinforcer. They can be very powerful things, but food is good because the delivery, you can, you can gauge their level of how much they want it. You can drop a base diet and get them into the marrow bone. I am not saying starve your dog. That's why I have two other things on here. But if your dog's fat and happy and you're like, oh, I'm going to get, he's not into the marrow bone, Joel. And, and I, you bring me a big old dog. I go, yeah, well, I wouldn't be into it either. Is it like Maslow's hierarchy at all? Do you, did they teach you that? I have no idea what that is. It's like the same you thing. You always bring teaching. up these big words. It's basically like the levels of security. Like first you need like a home and safety oh. and then it goes down and then you want material possessions and like social standing. That's a d- like dog that. training t- thing too. I've seen that where they have this pyramid. The, the force free people are like, Dude, which I don't disagree with, right? The pyramid of safety and blah, blah, blah. Do you know about that or no? Like, mm, I've seen it, but I don't really know. They might just be making stuff up too. Yeah. They just copied it from the pe- people stuff. Yeah. Which is fine. So does that, so leave your dog the greatest thing, the second greatest thing in the entire world. Make sure they're, try to get them into the greatest thing. Now these work in conjunction. So the leaving. So here's what I do. I go to people's homes. I, when I went to people's homes, they didn't have a lot of cameras. So we'd have to set mm-hmm. up an iPhone on the ground. We would leave them a marrow bone. So this is what you can do with cameras. Now with all these cameras you can have in your house, you walk out the door. If you want to get your keys, you sort of act like you're leaving for real. You walk out the door, you watch your camera and the dog will sit there and he'll perk up and he'll be, and then he'll listen for the car from the crater in the house. You'll see him go and start listening for the car. And then you'll see him start to whine or howl. And then you need information. That's what, why we're doing this. Then you'll see him maybe go down and lick on the marrow bone. Lick, 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 work for 10 minutes, stand up, hear something, look around, lick, lick, lick. So you want to start walking in the house to counter that superstitious behavior while your dog's eating the thing. Not when the dog is barking and whining. So as the dog's going, lick, eating the marrow bone, you walk in and the dog goes, what the? She came in and I wasn't barking or whining. Yeah, you you proved the superstition wrong. I, yes, maybe for the first time serious it could it could be also like whining like they could think pacing got you back they could think a lot of things so we're breaking that chain of su- of superstition hmm. it's like a correlation versus causation thing yeah they correlate you coming in with this thing and they're like oh wait no oh. maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe me eating a marrow bone doesn't cause my owner to get come home or whatever or whatever yeah, the you want would be, yeah. eating the marrow bone does cause yeah, them yeah. to come home plus they're getting reinforced while you're gone and you might say oh my dog doesn't like marrow bones great yeah don't get caught up on the details figure out what they like bully sticks food filled frozen kongs pig's ears um it has to be highly reinforcing pig's ears yeah pig's ears use costco used to sell them they just it looked like they just lopped an ear off a pig and put it in a bag they were like the greasiest nastiest greatest things ever um, honest kitchen makes a really good fish stick. It's just herring skin and it's chewy. They last for a Doberman. It would last about two minutes. So guess if my dog had separation anxiety, I'd give him the greatest thing, hair about herring bone pig's ears lasted. My dog's about two minutes too. Well, I'd walk out, I'd start the car. I'd get out. I would watch the camera. He's eating his thing. I'd walk in. He got reinforced while you were gone. And he learned that, 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 the wrong behavior didn't get you back twofold. Then you go longer, then you go longer, then you go longer, and then it's fixed. That's my method. Hmm. Okay. Now I only focused on one or two of these exercise is the other one. And some people know, I'm not saying exercise is going to fix it because most people have tried that se- with separation anxiety, but it just makes sense that your dog shouldn't have pent up energy when you leave. Do you think that having not enough food? is better for reducing anxiety than having too much like with them well you know how like i think i get more anxiety when i'm like overfed i mean obviously over caffeinated but if you're overfed i feel like you have all this extra energy but you're not like doing anything to like get rid of it whereas if you were a bit starved i wonder if you're like that I don't think worried so about i've it. never seen a overweight versus underweight correlation with separation anxiety hmm. Let's crack that code. Yeah. 
but I have worked with a lot of separation anxiety over the years. Is it a mental ill? Like, is it just like a something they're born with? Is it? Is I mean, it, 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 it can be. I never left my dog and it just sort of slowly developed that just in the same way you never left your kid and they're six or eight or nine. And they're just like, what? Like you got to be smart. You shouldn't leave your one-year-old a lot. You shouldn't leave your dog a lot, but you also shouldn't, you also shouldn't like do the opposite and never leave your dog. It's also a dog though. So, I mean, like if we take it back to the seventies or the eighties, were these dogs really not like, were they watched every hour? Like what happened here? Uh, it seems crazy. Um, no, I mean, I'm just saying extremes. This dog, when I was in Hawaii last week or the week before, whatever it was, this dog next door would not stop freaking barking like a thousand times. Maybe next week you could cover how to stop a dog that doesn't stop barking. That's what neighbor. we're covering right now. For neighbor. Yeah, you can't do it. Is that illegal? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's no stopping them. That's... Uh, uh, Every house I've lived in, there's a dog that barks, and I don't get why the owners. I'm like that dog. The, dog the owners are there bothering me. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm like, is the owner like? I know, not hearing this over what? the. I can't stand a dog barking at my facility, or it, 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 it I can't even relax. Yeah, when the dogs you've, are you've talked about that before. That like it'll drive you absolutely. Yeah, you'll go crazy. crazy. I don't know how it doesn't drive these people crazy. So, maybe they're deaf. So, know. exercise before you go just makes sense. Reinforcement when you're gone. I think just makes sense and leaving for periods of time longer, hopefully while the dog is chewing on something is the best. And then you walk in and then they're you like, progressively go for longer. They're like satisfied, right? There's like a, yeah. And they're doing something else and they're breaking the superstition elsewhere. and they're getting reinforced and they didn't know it could happen like that. How you walked in. Here's the things that, that if you Google it right now, I think you'd bring up. Don't be excited when you get home. Yeah, it's fine. I, I agree. Is that going to really fix severe separation anxiety? No. It's a little fix. It's cool. But people get caught up on like these things that are just like, oh, like you'll fix moderate separate. You'll fix mild separation anxiety with that. Mental illness, you aren't going to fix by not giving the dog a lot of attention when it comes home. I'm into big fixes, not little stupid fixes. You know what's funny though is like so the and people acting like they're big fixes. The video that you posted on Monday, which would be yesterday, Thursday is when this is dropping. But yeah, um, the owners you were like basically wanting them to kind of more walk into the dog, like to get the the dog's trying to be. I think it was trying to approach Prince, and you're like kind of move, tell him to move on down the road, right? Mm -hmm. It's like these things. It's like they've never never even thought about it. I've seen this with a ton of your videos. Where yeah. Like you, it's like they've like they don't want to be mean to the dog, right? Like they haven't thought that this is a possibility because they're like, bro, you know that saying? dog that he's talking about. I said the dog was different when I got on the leash, and I said I'm going to give you the leash, and then I ended up talking for like a minute and a half. Like I was watching it, going like, do I edit this out? But it was important. I'm going to give you the leash. The minute I give you the leash, I want you to continue. I knew what the dog was going to do. He's going to go up to his daddy and go, oh my God, daddy, I missed you so much. I was with me and guy Joel for about five minutes. And so that guy, because the dog was horrible with his owners and too chill with me. I didn't even do anything to him. The minute I got the leash, he was just like, whatever. He knew what time So I was. gave him the leash and I said, keep walking because I knew it was going to happen. And the minute he walked into the dog, he's walking. He's just walking. He just didn't stop and pet the dog and say, oh my God, I haven't seen you for five minutes. He walked into the dog and it made an impression on his brain that the owner is a different human being. Now. And it's now. And it sometimes takes one thing. I think it's a whole like paradigm shift for the owners. Like they, like, you know, like even with the golden retrievers about a month ago that yeah. you did. In the in home session. It's kind of like, wow. Like, like tell him like knock it off like step on the leash those type of things where it's like no you can't jump on me like like minds are blown on this stuff bro i always used to say to clients they go that's a first time for whatever and i go i love firsts firsts make an impression in young animals brains mm -hmm. and we're, you know under one under two is a young animal and the these the dogs will go well, that's the first, that's the first time a human walked into the house and then just kept walking and didn't give me attention. 
Like dogs are like, what just happened? This Joel guy walked in and I jumped on him and he just kind of pushed me off and didn't look at me and pet me. And you can see it in their eyes. They're like, what just happened? Like you said, paradigm shift. I think this is a bit off topic, but you this, need to do that stuff. This idea of it's similar to like, I think I was like 13 and I was just a total maniac and I would just talk crap to people all the time. And then I like talk crap to some guy in high school and he was like, he's like twice as big as me. And he's like, I'm going to kick your, you know what? Yeah. And I was like, this guy's se going to seriously, because I called him something. Right. Yeah. And it's like, and then you're like, oh, if I run my mouth, someone's going to like beat my it's like ass. A superstitious behavior. Well, then you learn like, oh, wow, I can't I never say whatever that. I want. I didn't know I couldn't say whatever I wanted. I, I, no like, idea. I gotten away with it up to this point. Yeah, you no you ever hear either. Louis C.K. and Joe Rogan? He tells the I boycott funniest Louis C.K. Because I like him. Because I'm no, just I'm I'm woke. <laughs> I've changed I've changed sides as of last, last week. I guess so. Um Luke CK and Joe Rogan talks about that exact thing. He was like talking crap and this little scrawny kid comes up to him in the library at school. It's the funniest story because Louis CK is so honest. And this little kid comes up and goes, I'm going to whoop your ass if you say that. And Louis CK is like, I have a choice to make. I can, he's, re he's being serious. He's either, I'm going to keep talking or I'm going to shut up. And the guy goes, stand up, let's do this. And Louis CK was in front of like all his friends and Louis CK goes, I just sat there and was the biggest wuss in the world and all my friends, but it like really affected him. But some guy came up and this is life people. This ain't all, all roses and rainbows and, and treats dude. Like the silliness of, uh, w what people think dogs are is like out of control, dude. Like, yeah, they're not there different is, than people. There is a, um, but there is that what anthropomorphic, type of thing going on to different extremes with different groups right there's a lot of similarities right and a lot of differences more similarities than differences i'd say in uh in behavior not to trash my wife like i did last week but while we're on the topic we were a long time ago we were arguing and she was like i was like she's like you, you know you shouldn't like just eat meat like eating meat and protein it's like that's not really the way and i was like it's absolutely the way that's like that's what animals do and she's like well we're not animals I'm like, no, we are animals. Like we're in the kingdom animalia. Like for sure we're animals, right? Did she say it like that? We shouldn't eat meat. I think she was like not a fan of the like the like heavy meat eater diet. Kind oh, of thing. oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like it, it's not natural or something. I'm like, it's totally natural. And from what I understand, and I think That's I've seen natural. this in the comments about like supposedly the um all of that protein like helped to build like the size of the brain in the humans. There's stuff in animal meat that is in nothing else. There's not anything in like, like other things like there's stuff in meat that's in nothing else, but there's not stuff in plants. That's not in, in there's there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's, it only goes one way. Also like, but shouldn't I just be Arginine eating like and... cheese its and stuff all day? Isn't that yeah, healthier? Exactly. Yeah. Wait, let's not get into like, yeah, yeah. Like this. So does that make sense about separation anxiety? It does. That's my that's my fix. That's the best I got. I do the like, thing is that's best anybody's got. I do like the idea of the if I do say so myself. The exercising. Yeah, that's one because of the big three. If you really exercise really hard, yeah. like yesterday, I did a bunch of burpees and like the Navy SEAL ones. Mm -hmm. And I after I was done, I rolled onto my back right here and I just laid down for like five minutes and didn't move because yeah. I was too tired. Yeah. And so you know let's I mean? say you had a, uh, yes, a mental illness like ADHD, which I, do. I think is a mental illness. Um, it's not going to fix your ADHD. It's going to help your ADHD. That's the same with separation anxiety. Yeah. It's actually not going to fix separation anxiety. It's going to help it. Yeah. That's All a, these things are going to help it. If we go 30% with exercise, 30% with, um, with the reinforcement thing and 30% with the leaving for, we're at 90% now. Did we fix it hundred percent? No, we're at 90%. But it's also like a work, it's a work in progress thing, right? Yeah. It's a, it's a lifestyle fix. Yes. But yeah. you, you got to do it all. Like you can't, you can't do one and not understand one. You, Cause one of them might fix it 60 and one of them, one of my big three might fix it 10. Well, I'd rather, Make sure you understand the one that's going to do. You don't know right now which one is going to do 60 and which one is going to do 10. So you got to do them all. 
can I, again, this part of the podcast where I tell you that you're wrong and I have a better way of fixing dogs. And then people in the comments say you're wrong generally. They, well, they always, they, they, it's my channel. They also know where their bread is buttered. So they're like, they know, like they don't want to get the Joel Smackdown either. Cause they know you'll come down with a comment. That'll just like blow, blow them away. So imagine you have a client, right? We'll say it's a, I don't know, an Australian shepherd and it has a really bad separation anxiety. Okay. Right. And then I'm like, oh, okay. I'll tell you the breeds they're prone to it too. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. You do that oh, first. You want me to do that? Yeah, because I'm going to use one of oh, them. Oh, yeah. Weinreimer, Vichlis, Pitbulls. That's the top three. Great Danes, maybe. No, the big three are those three. Pitbulls. Okay, so we'll use Pitbulls pit are three, though. They're not as much as Weinreimers. Go ahead. So, um, and the problem is they can come out of crates and try to kill themselves getting out of crates and like live and get out of a chain thing somehow. And you're like, you almost died coming out. And they're like, yeah, I don't care. They don't care. They're so strong. Go ahead. So Pitbull. So I'm going to, so say you do your little magic with the Pitbull. So I take it away from the owner. I introduce it to a new owner in like Alaska or Montana or something, right? Yes. Dog has a different diet, lives outside oh. with a bunch of other badass dogs, like shepherds and Rottweilers and yeah. whatever else. And they're like rolling on the ground fighting all the time and just- yeah doing dog stuff, chasing stuff out in the, in the wild, right? I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. Don't you think that separation anxiety is just like- I do. Way better? It's gone. I solved it. Yeah. I did yeah. We can agree on but, something. Okay. You have a kid with ADHD. You stick him on a farm and you're, you're, you're like, time to work all day, bro. And uh, you have uh, these parents who are hardworking leaders- um, and, and you do some other things. Yeah. You could argue that ADHD is going away too, or the depression. No, it all goes away. Like how, how much is, how much depression is there in the mountains of Kazakhstan? Yeah. It's a little like, like yeah, not as much as here. I'll get, I know that. Yeah. Part of it's a comparison piece, but what you were saying is almost like, oh, like my hand hurts. And like you hit them with a hammer and you're like, oh yeah, I'm okay. No, my hand doesn't yeah. hurt. Right. There's a level of that, but yeah. it is interesting. So you basically think that a lot of it is the unnatural state that a dog is generally in, like in a small condo or something. It's by itself for eight hours in a condo. That's not that normal, right? It's not that normal, yeah. I mean, it's normal in America probably, but not... Yeah. Like that wasn't how dogs were built to be. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. So that would be to the proactive point. Like, How many wild animals are have separation anxiety? From what? from anything like their mother. I mean, I could get the mothers to some degree, but if you're one and you have separation anxiety, that's not really the same, right? A, a one-year-old child. Cause it's like age appropriate, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. They all have, they should have separation anxiety at six months. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I said the puppies do and should. But if like one, like it's a tiger or something and one won't leave its mom and the other four do like, then that one oh. has a problem. Probably. Well, yeah. Cause he might die. Yeah. If he doesn't learn. Whatever. Yeah. If he doesn't follow mom, dude, the wild, so I saw this video of this person raising a bear and the bear was so out of control in the house. Like you could raise a lion and like, it just wouldn't it a black bear? destroy. It was like a little brown bear and it was just running and destroying their house. And I was like, like people have monkeys and people have different animals. And they don't like just destroy your house. And I was like, why is this bear so crazy? And here's why in the wild bears will walk. They just walk all day. Cats don't walk all day. Cats like deer don't walk all day. Well, they kind of no, they, no, they don't. They yeah. bed down for e the entire day. E exactly. Okay, yeah. good. Bears and elephants just walk, and that's all they do. And so this bear is basically in this house, going like, "I just need to get this energy out." Um, I would never raise a bear, or like a chimp, or a, an elephant. I, I know bears are are crazier and more dangerous They're than crazy. Chimp. But I still am more afraid of a chimp. I feel a like grown chimp. a chimp would like. Well, they torture say me. they say a chimp will eventually, like a male chimp will eventually like try to kill you. Whereas a bear, there isn't that sort of similarity in the male. Like a male bear won't necessarily go, "I'm going to kill you because you're a male." A male He's chimp not, yeah. is like, "I'm going to." They think I'm you're competing. Charge. They think you're competing for. Yeah, they for, don't know. Uh, female opportunity yeah they don't right? know the bear's like i know we're different yeah the chimp's like we're not that different yeah the bear's like we're dating different chicks right yeah the chimp's like no yeah the your chimp. wife is mine <laughs> right yeah 
dude how crazy are they you like look that? like you know you're you're the same bipedal i look like a chimp is what you're saying yeah you walk the same are they like creepy about women and stuff do you know i like, don't know maybe female would... like zookeepers come in there's a difference yeah i've worked i've seen it like not seen it but uh, you see chimps in an environment and like yeah i trained a baboon um it could only be male trainers on the baboon that walked the baboon the, because Why? it was a female baboon and the fear was that she would eventually oh, get aggressive, at the, get aggressive female. at the females do you believe it uh i think my staff knew what they were talking about yes just checking I mean, yeah we don't that's know a, for sure though that's right? what they say no this is not a that's what they say they probably had a couple of bad experiences, but the right? females they could groom. So the female trainers would come over, and the baboons would groom their arm, and it was like a very good thing for the female baboons. But to sort of have one that was walking them just out of the cage, like I, mm, I think maybe an, not. It's dangerous. I think an interesting thing that some of the pod definitely understands is that a lot of the times when you talk about wild animals and wild animal training and stuff like that, is it. I think it puts into a better context, the dog stuff, right? Like when you understand it's done something for me, I don't know, but yeah, I mean, there's the, obviously there's killer whale, but there's the other side, but there's just something about like when you truly understand why a hyena acts the way it acts or, you know what I mean? You get, yeah. you, you learn the nature, the true nature of an animal, then you're not so confused. It's easier to train them, right? If you understand their nature. Yeah. If you sure. keep thinking that a, if you think with everything like a, a um, let's see, a, a killer whale is exactly like a human, right? If you always bring that to everything you're going to do, you're going to be getting confused. Whereas if you understand the orcas better or the killer whales, as you call them. Yeah. Right. Then it's just like, you know, like a pig or whatever. You just understand like they root around and just eat everything. Like, oh. You're not like sh shocked and trying to stop them. Just like the healer or whatever, trying to go after the yeah. leg. Yeah, yeah. And people get that, like the healer or the protection dog, the kind of corso or something. But like my brain goes to very much like nature and what they're for in nature and how far they walk. Elephants have bad feet in captivity because they don't walk them enough in, or they don't walk enough in captivity. So they get bad feet and they have they have problems. So you get bad feet from not using them. Essentially. Yes. Yes. Everything's Use based on the it. wild. Everything. And you say could say dog stuff is it's changed, but like there's, they're, they're still canines. So what can canines do? Canines can run very far. Wild dogs and wolves, and that never changed. Dogs can run with people. Cats cannot. Why? Because they're dogs. Maybe there's a reason why this podcast is so much like dogs, wild animals, parenting is because it's all the same thing. It's, it's very similar. Yeah. I sometimes think about, I think my channel is different than any channel. I'm not tooting my own horn. I'm not saying it's better. I think it's different. I think it's I think different. about things differently and I look at things differently. And I've often thought why. And I've thought, well, I'm an independent thinker, so I'm not going to watch other channels and read books and go, I'm going to be Caesar Milan mm -hmm. or I'm going to be Victoria Stillwell and I'm going to copy that person. Like never once in, have I thought that. And then I just got my hands on a lot of dogs. But I think the other part is it's all the wild animals I worked with. It just changed my brain and I can't point to it, but I just think about dogs differently than people who haven't worked with monkeys and lions and baboons and then and killer whales then went to dogs. It did something that I, I can't put my finger but on. But did it put you in a position of like approaching it from a more of a wild animal's perspective? I don't know. I think I've just seen so much different behavior. If you think about a dog trainer, they've seen a lot of dog behavior a good dog trainer. I've seen a lot of dog behavior, but I've also seen wolf behavior because I worked with one. I also saw cat behavior and behavior is behavior. I've also seen killer whale behavior and like it's still behavior. It's like my analogy of a lot of NFL quarterbacks were once pitchers. It's different, but it's not that different. It's still the throwing of a ball and our movements and they can be good at both. They can be great at both because they know how to throw the ball. It's a different ball. It's a totally different deal, but it's not. Hmm. My surfing kids are also really good skateboarders. It's actually very different, but it's not. Yeah. I was actually talking to my daughter about that with tennis, that like sometimes if somebody's been playing 
like ball sports or other type of um, like hand-eye coordination things. It's like just because they've been playing tennis for a year or two doesn't mean that they're not going to bring something different to the game if they've been playing like ball sports their entire life. Yes. Right. Versus somebody who just jumps into tennis. Yes. Like it's, it's kind of what you're talking about. It's not, it's not exactly, but there is a level of like, what do you call that? Where it like, what is it called? Where it like it's crossover crosses over to this yeah. like other venture. Well, that's a whole nut. No- yes. No, you're right. And there's, there's, I just saw a video where, where a guy was like, your kids should pay a lot of different sports early on because all these things happen in their muscles and in their, and in their brain that, that you can only do at a certain time. And then they'll excel at that sport. They eventually choose rather than, Hey, you want your kid to play football? We'll just have them play football for, why wouldn't they be better? They played more football than the kid who played soccer and baseball and football. And at 15, the kid who played the three sports are better. Well, why? The one kid played football more. Maybe it's like the neuroplasticity. Yes. It, he talked about that, but he also, I think, talked about it in the muscles and the joints and in the brain. Yeah. It's also probably like fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fibers and stuff. Like you're, if you had them doing a variety of things, they would be developing different styles, right? Whereas like sprinting is like fast twitch, yeah. just like. Yeah. And you need all of it. Movements. And when you get to that high level, you need, you need all of it. Yeah. And it's harder. I think it's harder to train but that's that's an interesting take on it but i think that the mental side is what's more valuable because i've seen side. um i know i always have everything i have is to do with the ufc but like george st pierre who is like you know champion and one of the greatest uh wrestlers that the ufc has ever seen he didn't even wrestle in high school like the guy is just a phenom but he did a lot of other stuff so he did a lot of sports he did or at least he did a lot of taekwondo and other types of of uh yeah martial arts so he became so it's weird when you see people that they just like throw them in a sport like football and all of a sudden they're just like really good and you're like how are you so much better than these people that have been playing it their entire life my as, as i've talked about before i'm coaching my son who's 12 his football team um this is his second season he only played like four games or there was a four game season last year in summer he played that and now i'm coaching him this year he's the best player on the field kids never played football really um, basically he's the best player on the field, partly because he's just done so many other sports. Also, what if people are just like, just like in dog training, they're just overcomplicating everything. Like if you think about like, say you're a receiver, I know he's a quarterback, but let's just say you're a receiver. He's a running back. Oh, I thought he was a quarterback. No? no. Okay. Well, let's say he's, he's small. It's, it's hard to throw a ball at that age as far. He needs to throw it farther to be the quarterback. Go ahead. Let's say you're a receiver, right? It's like we get into all the X's and O's of it, but the same, the simple thing is like, why don't you just run really fast and try to catch a ball? Like yeah. if you keep it pretty simple. And I think a lot of times people in sports, they just make things way too complicated because they're probably just not that good at that. So it's like, it's good to like sit there on Sunday and have your fantasy football and talk about all this BS. When the reality is, is like, sometimes you just need to be inc- incredibly talented and fast and explosive. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like how you are with dog training. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. You don't want to talk about football anymore? No. Okay. What else you got? They don't want us to talk about football anymore. Is that true, guys? Here's what we've got. I I mean, separation anxiety, that's that. Child rearing in sports, that's that. Can we do one more thing on separation anxiety real quick? Yeah. So you do agree that a, like, if you really just like kicked your dog's butt on a uh, really intense hike that was appropriate for them. Um, obviously every dog is different. So, you know, pit bull can not maybe go as far as other dogs, but you really just like whipped them from a exercise standpoint. Right. Like I got to think that that exercise or that, that anxiety is dropping when they get home and they're just like, dude. Yep. And if it's I'm in the mild out. or medium range, you could have fixed it. Or at least if for it, the day, right? Yeah. Oh, for the day and probably carrying into next day. Yeah. But if it's in the severe range, you're now in the mental illness range, which which takes the dog to another level. Tiredness doesn't really matter that much. It's a mental illness. So dogs come out and I see the dog kick into second gear or third gear or fifth gear. And I go, okay, this dog isn't following normal behavior patterns. Hey, was this dog a police dog? Oh yeah, it was. Okay, I can see it because... Your dog now thinks this is their job to 
to tell other dogs to get out of here or they got neurotic around the pool, right? So their brain changed. They, they took it to another level that doesn't make any sense. They should be too tired or too hot to do that, but they're not. They're like wired or something. Yeah. But what about when you said tired though, maybe it's not just tired. Maybe it's, maybe they just, they're getting the exercise, not about tiring them out, but is just giving them the like appropriate stimulus for them as a creature that they hit a level just the way that uh, elephant needs to get, walk a certain distance to be like, okay. Yeah. Right. Like some of these animals probably need an insane amount of exercise and they get almost none. Yeah. Some of these dogs. So, or yeah. So yeah. So it's like, there's nothing, there's nothing inherently wrong with them. It'd be kind of like for me, like as a kid, we're like, Oh, like something's wrong with this kid. Like he doesn't like to sit in a classroom for two hours and just listen to somebody, ra- yan- you know, whatever rant and rave. It's yes. like maybe he just likes to go play outside. Yeah. And that's like Jordan Peterson talks about that. Like it's just not set up for young bo- schools, not set up for boys and especially challenging boys. Like it makes no sense what yeah. what's happening yeah. um and yeah the apartment life isn't set up for wine rammer or husky it's just not maybe, it's simply not maybe you should do like a segment or but a some people live in a, an apartment with a husky and i'm 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 trying to help them i don't i know some people have done this but i don't know if someone has really done like a full video series on okay you're gonna get a dog like come to me first like let's talk through like what's your living situation? Almost like a questionnaire or something, but really walking people through like, Hey guys, when you're looking at, there's all kinds of different dogs. There's like working dogs. All right, right? How would we do this? Would make just like a series of videos would be cool on YouTube. Yeah. But because it, I think it's always like, well, Hey Joel, I've let's, got a problem let's, with my, let's with, do it with my dog. And they go, you're like, well, let's do it right now. They've already done it. Let's go. Can we do it right now? Yeah. I hey, mean, I'm getting me paid the, by the hour. Let's go. Give me the, give me the, I'll Good give question. you a scenario and then you, so okay, I'll give ahead. you a scenario and then you tell me what type of dog I should get. What? It's not just what type of dog. Or a kind right? of breed Don't, or a, a group of dogs. Do you have a yard, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right? yeah. No, I'm going to give you that breakdown. I'm going to give you the demographics. Okay, go. Say. Okay. I'm single, 26 years old, male, um, like to go to the beach. Um, don't plan on getting married for the next five to 10 years. Okay. Uh, no kids, obviously. Um, I work from home. Oh, and, um, I have a lot of females over at night. <laughs> Go ahead. This is you. <laughs> it's definitely not me now. 15 years ago. <laughs> this is super. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Way out of date. That's you. Okay. Um, you live in Southern California or do you live in Alaska? I live in North Dakota. Okay. All right. You. Oh, I didn't tell you about bro. like what type. Did I tell you about my living situation? No. Go ahead real quick. Yeah, I have like a, I'm on an acre and I have like a, you, I, bro, I rent a room amongst other bachelors. Bro, you, you jet. Did I change it? Or? No, you didn't change it. You just put like the single greatest scenario for owning a dog. Well, we're going to have another one coming up right okay. after this. Okay. Um, um, okay. You, uh, what kind of dog do you want? Something that's badass. Okay. That when get, I get the oh, most badass dog. You how, want. how does this guy live in South Dakota? He goes to the beach all the time. Like, <laughs> how does that work? Okay. You can get whatever dog you want, sir. Yeah. You're the okay. perfect uh, dog owner. Okay. So you I work want, from home. You have an acre. I'm you're you're good, you, bro. I'm going to give you five. And then you tell me like, yeah, yes or no. I know you say all of them, but okay. So great, Dane. No problem. You can get any dog you want. I would ask you, what dog do you want? Okay. Um, a Dalmatian. Yeah, good luck finding them, but go ahead. Okay, so you're not interested in that one. Um, I think you get it. They're hard to find. Plus, they have aggression problems. Okay, same situation, same guy, same situation, different location, different house. Now he is the same guy. He lives in, um, he lives in Texas. M- no, Mir Mesa. He lives in, uh, Mir Mesa. San Diego. Yeah, four story apartment building, um, concrete jungle outside really all he's gonna be able to do is like go through the walks off little green areas where the dog can take a crap um yeah um i want how a, how often can you walk your dog i also want a connie corso yeah you shouldn't get a connie corso okay you're um, a little too weak co- of a human for that yeah no you i mean here's the 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 deal is if you work a lot, 
you can't walk your dog a lot. If you don't like, there's people who hike all the time in Southern California. Mm -hmm. They can get most dogs. You want to go on three, six mile hikes a week. You can get almost any dog you want. Most people though, don't because actually your do dog that, is though. working. Some do. There's a lot of females who are like hiking junkies. But I would say like, if you hike 52 weeks a year, you're like, you have hiking is, you know, the greatest that's your thing. thing. That's, that's on your, that's on your, the back of your bumper sticker. Right. And yet it's only yeah. once a week. Really. You have, you have what your wife has, which is like the 12 point, 26.2 20, <laughs> marathon thing. Yeah. She's more of a mid distance person than that. Yeah. I see her running all the time. Yeah. I drive she, by her. She is legit. So yeah, that's like a different thing where you actually could run a dog. If, I mean, some dogs can't run Exercise that fast. Exercise right? is kind of everything. But can you, so dogs what dogs can fast. keep up with her running? Because some some can't, right? There's well, certain dogs that cannot. There's a lot. Yeah. I mean, a wine rammer, Vishla, a husky if it's not too hot. Um, um, Golden Retriever or no? It's a lot of running. That's a lot of hair. Yeah. It's a lot of heat. They get warm. So short Huskies do too. Better. Huskies do too. But they have a lot of energy. Um, mo I mean, most big dogs can. What if you lived in like Michigan? I wouldn't. I would. Too much concrete fine, right? for a Great Dane. You want to be a lighter, a lighter, a lighter, a lighter stuff. Uh, animal, maybe. You you do want you want that what a wine rammer is Vishla uh Vishla Vishla Vishla. So like a thirty pound, forty pound dog is ideal for like 40, a lot of running. Forty fifty. Okay. Fifty. You get north of fifty, and it's like not great, right? Yeah, like Prince shouldn't run that much. Yeah, and then but a all, Bichon shouldn't run that much. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, Chihuahua can't cover the distance, like no, not in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, you want to. It's like a like hundred miles for a Chihuahua, right? Yeah. Okay, let me give you another one. Can I give you another one? Yeah. You want to go down this road? Sure. Okay. Um, I have two. I have a. It's a you husband and a wife. Get, okay. Husband and a wife. They've got three kids. Yeah. Two, four, and six. I already got your answer. Um, and um, they want a pit bull. And um, why do you dad want... works? Dad why... works. Mom works. Kids are always at school. No one wants a, a pit bull. No, no. They go to the place and they get a pit bull. They go to the shelter and they get a pit bull. Is that how it goes? They get returned. apology segment next week. I apologize to the pit bull people. Very few people want a pit bull. I like them. Yeah, but do you want one? That's the different I don't want thing. Any dog. Yeah. If you could tell okay, me. Okay, go ahead. You have two, two, you have two, three kids. Three kids. We do a lot of soccer, baseball. Ah, a busy family. We're super busy. Yeah. And both parents hey, work. Hey, you, I wouldn't get any dog. Dude, you, that's so spot on. I was just thinking that. And that's why I don't have, have a dog. too much on your plate. Someone's breaking into a car out there. Yeah, hopefully it's not mine. We're, we're uh, in the hood. Da it's, da it's dangerous. So, but yeah, that's a great answer. Is like, I would, like every now and then my, my oldest will be like, can we get a dog? And I'm like, no. She wanted a bird too. I'm like, no, no chance. We're not doing it. No, it's, it's not so smart. hard. I got so much going on. I, I go to people's homes or I used to, or people come to me and they're like, yeah, I have three kids and we, and my youngest is four and you know, 11 and 12, let's say. And then they go, yeah. And we have a six month old dog. And I'm like, why? I, I honest, I think, I think it's a keep up with the Joneses thing. Oh, it's because I'm empty inside. I have everything well, how and I'm about, still not happy. Yeah, that might be it too. How about pour that love? You wanted a dog for a reason. And if the kids want a dog, tell your kids to be quiet and freaking shut up. Like, tell, tell, that. learn to tell your kids no. You can't have a dog. Oh, but they'll be sad. Yeah, who cares? Give them, be the greatest parents in the world and work on your children and your relationship with your husband and wife and go on vacation and make it good for your kids. Because if you do all that, you can say no to your kids. If you don't do all that, oh, both parents work because we need to put a pool in the back. So mommy and daddy are gone a lot. Then you feel bad. Then you say yes to the kid when it begs for a dog. I have zero problem saying no to my kids. You know how much? Because me and my wife are like exhausted from raising our kids in a way that we think is the best way we put a lot of time and work into it. So when they go, I want this, well, I don't care what you want. And you also are smart. It's to not get best two for cats. the family. Yeah, two cats. Cats are easy. Cats are cake. 
as long as you can handle someone can clean the cat boxes, which is a pain in the butt. My but, daughter does because yeah. they're her cats. Yeah, that's a good that's a good way. They pee and poop so much, cats. Bro, yeah. It's like three times a day we have to clean this thing out. But a lot of it's pee. Yeah, it's pee and it just clumps, it clumps up, up in this as giant you think it's thing. Poop, I didn't it's know. Pee. I didn't know all this. Yeah. But, but do you see what I'm saying about people like if you if you raise your kids right, you should have zero problem saying no to them. Here's what I want people. Am to I know. right or wrong about that? No, I have right. no problem saying no to my kids because I think we do a lot of good things for our kids. If yeah. I didn't do a lot of good things for my kids, I get where it's like, I want them to like me. I want them to be happier. It's I like want security. Yeah. Like they're trying to pander. Um, yeah. Do you think that? So like, yeah, my daughter was trying to get, um, a bird like an exotic bird she loves birds and i was like no and she was like really trying to strong arm me yeah. and i'm like this is not gonna happen and i think she was like upset because she knew like if i say no i'm not gonna do it right yeah but one thing i want your viewers who maybe are thinking about getting another dog depending on their life stage that they're at do you know how much joel charges for board and train it'll knock your socks off hundred thousand dollars it's so expensive that like people go on vacation and they're like how much is it and you're like yeah he's gonna train and take care of your dog the whole time you're gone we have to raise prices yeah let's do that let's double them yeah after i learned what dog daddy freaking charges i was like Killing what the it. hell i'm really not charging enough i know and you're training the dogs while they're there We're for picking two up weeks. their poop they're playing in a pool yeah, they're feeding. Yeah. They're, it's like going on a spa. It's like a spa day or a spa week. Yeah. The, the dog's going on vacation is what's happening. Yeah. We could I actually know. do such a good video. We just of like, are too lazy. Imagine I'm just if, too lazy to raise the prices. Imagine if we did like a, like, like watch like a spa advertisement and we did it. But for Beckman's, the problem is we don't need to advertise. No, in too no many. way. But seriously, guys, think about who is going to watch your dog when you're gone. People are thinking this is way too responsible, but who's going to watch your dog? Yeah. If you've got family that can take your dog, then that's fine. But you when should. you're gone two, three weeks, what are you doing? An advertisement for the born train? No. What are you doing? I'm just want people to understand you get a dog. People go uh -huh. like, what am I going to do with the dog when I'm go going uh -oh. on vacation? Oh, I get where you're at. Yes. That is a real concern. That's what I ask people all the time. They go, but they never think should of it. Should I get it? I guess not. They go, should I get a dog or whatever? And I go like, um, yeah, like, what are you going to do? Like, what if your dog gets sick? Do you have the money for it? What, what are you going to do when you go out of town? Yeah, what you're if, right. What if they don't have money? They shouldn't get a dog. Why not? Because you got to pay the vet bills. Because you can't let the dog die or be sick or, you know. So did we did we wrap up the uh, scenarios? Um. I feel like we didn't flesh out. No, don't I need get a one dog. more. I need one more. Like, okay, so I live, I have more time on my hands. Same situation. That's good. But I live in that same apartment, right? What do I do? Um, yeah, you could get, you get like a golden retriever or something. Or maybe smaller sometimes. Right? I mean, smaller, smaller. Before I said for the three kids, don't get a dog. I was thinking get a pug. People love them. They're not aggressive. You're not going to have to spend a lot of time on, on training. Why do people love pugs? Because they're just little snorty, dumb dogs and people are like, love them. Everyone with a pug loves their pug. And, but nobody ever they agrees have, like, with stickers me on this. of them on their like oh, they do. car and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. They love, because they're just, they're sweet little animals. They're always nice. They snort. They were in men in black, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. I don't know. People love pugs. I, I'm a big pug fan. Oh, Joel, they have n n airway issues. How are you possibly promoting them? Don't that's all bulldogs basically have some degree of... Well, French French bulldogs do. They're popular right now. Is French bulldog the one that they have to do cesarean section for? That's or no? what they say. We don't know if this is true or not. Yeah, they're like, they can't breed. They can't give birth. I'm like, what? We need to find out what if this the... is true. What are we doing? Like, we're finding this. Out. Like, seriously, say something really. It is about. strange that that we're even like breeding a dog, or there's there's tons of French bulldogs. You're telling me none is of them can French like, or English? French. None of them can give birth. Maybe that maybe that breed should sort of naturally um, not be around. 
The French bulldogs give a French bulldog can give birth by a natural process, but it is rare to see one do so. What? These are many issues and complications related to the birth process. Okay. What about English bulldog? What's an English bulldog? I feel like I said the normal bulldog. I, 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 what are all these French bulldogs doing around? I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm kind of with, I thought I was against, uh, what? people getting mad about this, but I'm, I'm kind of with them. Is there any other bulldog that might have a similar problem? I feel like I saw one. Maybe in English. I mean, they're, yeah, I thought there was a bigger. different one. Um, that is so weird to think that a dog can't, that just shows you. Can they have at. sex? Probably. That doesn't seem difficult. I think it's just I that thought I, I think it's that, that the dogs are too big. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, time time maybe to phase these guys out. How dare you like, talk like that? What's the what's the oh my god, I can't think natural selection? Who's about, the guy? Uh Darwin? Yeah, like the Darwin Awards. Like, what isn't it kind of time? Give, what dogs can't give birth naturally? Um oh, yeah. British. Many. That's what I was thinking. Okay. British. Oh, British. And, pugs. and pugs. Oh, that's funny. They can't breathe much either. I just, I'm kind of drawing the line at natural birth, the inability to do that. Like a lot of, I can barely breathe. I went to the doctor. Like people are like, oh, pugs can't breathe. You shouldn't breathe them. Like I can't breathe. Can I pass on my genes? Bulldogs have a large head and narrow pelvis, which can make it more difficult for them to give birth naturally. For All this right. reason, it's important for bulldogs to receive careful monitoring during labor and delivery. And they may require veterinary assistance. All right, but Frenchie Frenchies are little; they're over the top. Rarely give birth. I'm I'm with I'm with the people on this. That's what I think of when I think of British bulldog. Oh yeah, British bulldog, the wrestler. Yes. So, um, no, that's interesting. Um, I always wondered if that was true or not. That's so weird that um, it's so weird that that's like an actual thing. Yeah. Where we're at in America, there. Or I just learned this. Places. I'd heard it, but I kind of, you know, I have a, I don't believe most things I hear. Yeah. And we just confirmed it. I mean, could Google possibly be wrong? There's no way. They're never, it's never wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. All right. No more French Bulldogs. No, yeah. Joel is recommending elimination. That was the loudest drink I've ever heard on this podcast. They can't give birth. Like, I've never heard of such a thing. Hmm. Have we have we done this breed for for uh, breed of the week? French bulldogs? No. Boxer. No, they're very un uh, uninteresting dogs. You're losing me every time on the breed of the week, man. All right, boxers. They're kind of like Dobermans. They're wow. German. They're German. They're in the working breed. They're a medium sized dog. They should not be giant. She Their gets about frame is sort of Dobermanish. Seventy seventy is a, a pretty big male boxer maybe maybe that's like average but they really shouldn't be i mean dobermans can get in the 100 range why am i comparing to dobermans because they're very similar they act similar really? they play similar barrel chest skinny butt same country you know i'm, I'm guessing boxers were older eric's bringing it's it up right that you now bring oh, an you older breed. boxer and it doesn't show like a, a boxer like an athlete it shows the actual dog that's yeah. really funny uh don't play that that's gonna be loud um Okay, so wait, there's the physical stuff. So um, temperament-wise, they're great. They're normal. They're boring. 65 to 80 pounds. Yeah, they're kind of boring. Like they're just good dogs at this point. I would say the unique characteristics would be um, there's a pretty high level of like nuttiness in yeah. boxers. Like when they're, they're kind of like, not the wine rhymer nutty, but like kind of nutty. So but they're good with, yeah, they're good with the family. So affectionate is four out of five. Good with children, five out of five. Yeah, good with other dogs, good as three out of five. Yeah. Shedding? Yeah, not much. No shedding? Yeah, they do shed, but um, not that bad. They have a nice coat, don't you think? Yeah, short. Drooling level, three. I'd probably, probably four, say huh? like four. They get these big old jowls. Yeah, they do. Um, And then they like shake their head and it, it's like yeah. Beethoven or something. Openness to strangers. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah, they're, they're typing it. They're a well-balanced dog, huh? Yeah. Training level, four out of five. Yeah. Energy level, four out of... They're definitely high energy, huh? Yeah, I'd say four out of five. There's dogs Working with level, more. No, look at this. Mental stimulation needs four out of five. Yeah, that goes along with energy. Can we look needs. at one more? I know. What, what is the type of dog, uh, Jack Russell? Can you give us a mini Jack Russell breakdown while you're at it? Spiel, Fraser dog. Um, 
don't think we've done that one before, have we? Jack Russell. No, 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 no. Um, Theo Vaughn called Eddie Bravo a, a deaf Jack Russell. Um, they're Jersey feisty Jersey. little dudes. Uh, they're real terriers, along with like Karen terriers and stuff. They're like real terriers. Like they'll kill things. Ten to um, twelve inches. That's it. They're strong. All terriers are strong. They bite hard. Jack Russells. Um, they're they're they they're they're athletic. Like so, if you go to like some little dog. They're as athletic as any small dog there is. It only weighs nine to fifteen pounds. Yeah, it's like it's a small, small dog, cat, or it's like a normal cat size. Um, affection with family, five out of five. No, you just like they like their family, but the is, greatest dog in the world with the family, like, is good with other dogs. Five? Do you think that's true? No, good with children, three out of five. Why would it be like a, an animal? This is according to AKC. Is affection with the family five out of five? Then good with children, three out of five. Like. Jack Russell's like love adults and yeah. how do they feel about teenagers? Should we like, email what kind of... AKC? Should we contact them? Be like, yeah. hey, you guys are wrong. Yeah. Let's see. Physical shedding level a bit higher. Three out of five. Coat, Coat grooming, grooming frequency to they don't drool. Yep, that's that's true. not bad, yeah. right? Um openness, openness to strangers. strangers. Do you believe that? Five. five out of five? Um watchdog, yeah, yeah. four out of five. Um playful, five out of five. I believe that. Personality. These are fine. Energy level, five out of five. Mental stimulation, five out of five. They're okay. They got it decently, right? right? Killing of small things, five out of five. Squirrels? Anything. I mean, not every one of them does, but you know, well, yeah, a lot of them do. They're showing one right there. They're interesting looking dog. Totally terrier. Yeah, they're cool. That guy's cool looking little dude. Some of them have looked like their faces trimmed and some of them look like it's not. Yeah, I, I think of them as short coat, but that one had longer coat. Yeah, it looked more like a Yorkie or something, right? A little bit. Now he's like AKC, like the perfect looking dog. He's so cute. Yeah. That's a nice looking dog. Yeah. So what do you think of the breed of the week? You got anything else for us on that? No. Anything amazing to say about these dogs? I thought I said everything about them. One of the... For you breed of the week haters. One of the... What do you want to know about boxers? I just told you. You told them all they need to know. I'm all feisty know. today. Yeah, you're on a good one, man. Um, Let me... Let me ask you a question. Oh, yeah. And then we've got... So one of the apology segment, one of the, I can't use all these, but uh, whatever. Okay. Apology segment. Come I've, ahead. and then you do your thing. Um, I have no, I listen, re listen to our last week's podcast. I only, I don't have a true apology, but I was wrong. We had a question from a viewer cause we gave out um, the hotline and he asked about the, if you had, you had to pick two 15 wolves, Three lions, I think it was six buffalo, ten alligators, ten thousand rats, ten thousand rats, fifteen hawks, or a hunter with a with a rifle. You had to pick two, and you had to defend you from the other ones. I think. Yeah, that's right. I was very sure of myself, and I watched rewatched it, and I ar argued with you, and argued with you, and act like I was right. I picked the wolves and the hawks, which I stand by as the as the second and third best one. You picked the hunter and the rats. I was thought I was right, and I argued with you. I was wrong. 10,000 rats. I did not give them the credit they deserve. It's 10,000 rats. Well, the other one that I thought... It's 10,000 rats. I saw that too, but there was another one which was like a lot of... Was it hawks? It yeah, but like 10, 15 hawks. That's so I was, I, thinking, I was thinking that I might amend my genius And take the rats and the hawks. Yeah, yeah, because I was thinking like... But I was thinking about 10,000 rats. I'm like, they have to be on there. Like, that's too many rats. It's too many. It would you could say probably 10,000 cockroaches. And like, then think about it. Like, how's six wolves going to help you with 10,000 rats? Nothing's going to help you. Bro, watch Game of Thrones. They take the rat and they put it in a thing and they put it on his chest and they heat up the end of the metal thing and the rat eats through the guy's stomach. Is that real? I don't know where they got that idea. That must be some ancient torture. So they take the rat and put it in like a coffee can. Then they put a flame on the back of the coffee can. And guess where the rat goes? Guess uh, where it's got one way to go. Yeah. And it freaking goes through the guy. If I don't one rat, that. if one, it's, it's the scene where they're in Heron Hall, that old castle that like burnt down. It's like cursed. Mm -hmm. And there's like a prison there. I should watch that again. You, you've only watched it once? I watched it once beginning to end, yeah. You have to watch it again. Like, yeah. You have to. Yeah, I still think about Ramsey when we talked about Ramsey. The... That was, I think R Ramsey's people did that. Oh, really? Yeah, he was a, he was in that really bad 
group. So I don't know if this is a great like. So um, one rat can do that. Imagine what 10,000 rats can do. So like, I don't know if this is a great way to go into our other segment. But like if you think about Game of Thrones, some of these other things, just like crazy, terrible torture. Oh, that's a, a bit, Like how does it really beat that hyena hippo thing? This is a good segue. Like it doesn't really beat it. I don't think like what happened to that little hippo. All right. He's setting us up. We're only going to show five seconds of this, or I think we're going to show it. Right. I guess we could, we can get. So we, 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 we hesitate to show it for two reasons. One, there's crazy laws out there. And two, it's very difficult to watch where you pause it. Right. Yeah. As soon right. as it comes on here. Pause. Um, all right. So animal rights activists. All right. Are we going here again? I'm going to assume. I'm going to assume that you always set them free people. Everything in the wild. You guys have watched all because I've seen my whole life. I've been watching every wild video I can find and reading every book I can find. I, I'm going to assume before you guys get on your high horse from Europe and from America, you guys have watched videos like this. If you are an animal rights activist and you haven't seen videos like this, um, then you have no, you are in no position to talk about anything. I'm going to just assume that you're not a hypocrite and that you have watched the, a video because there's many of them because this happens every day in Africa. This is the wild. All right, we're going to get this yeah, playing. Yeah, here, keep going ranting because I I've think seen, I ran into an issue. So we're, we're going to, it's a baby hippo and he's. Holy cow, that's so bad. It's Let's so loud. Back. Yeah, but I think it'll let us share now. We Don't even turn the music on. I mean, the, the yeah. sound is horrible. There we go. And it adds to it. it. Yeah. I so it, this so. is a baby hippo being eaten by hyenas. And we're not going to play it for you. We're just going to play you five seconds just so you can see. Just so you can, just so you can. Okay. And I'm going to explain some things to you here. Hyenas are not great killers. Dude, it's such a cute, it's such a cute. This, hippo this hippo too. is right now wondering where his mom is as he's feeling excruciating pain. He's going to probably last. I would stop. It's Dude. He doesn't fall down and stay down, by the way, if you watch this. He gets up. He's going to probably live for about an hour and he's going to be screaming for his mom. Now, this is hard to watch. I get it. This is the wild. Animal rights activists know that, right? I, I'm going to assume that they're not hypocrites and that they know exactly what goes on in the wild. This is not an argument for captivity. This is an argument for not being a crazy extremist and knowing what really life is about and what life is about in the wild. I, I can tell you stories of things I've not of, of, of videos I've seen in my 47 years when I used to just pop in a videotape because Mutual of Omaha was on and watch now with YouTube, you can watch all this stuff. I'm going to assume that they've seen this. They have not seen this or they, they can't watch it probably. I can't but this watch, is it, the, watch it really. This is, this is the world. But don't you think that people just after watching that video just hate hyenas even worse than they did before? I don't know. They just got to know. Can you really There's a lot a of hyena. animals that just you can hate a hyena. But I mean, you can't really hate can't, any wild you animal. You can't hate a hyena for being a hyena. Yeah, that's right. You that's can't. Kind that's of the wild. You can't yeah. hate the wild for the wild. Like that's the wild. Like that. That guy did not die in ten minutes. It, an hour, maybe two, maybe forty-five minutes. Slow, painful. Every day that's happening, and it, that's just one example that I saw this week. What do you think about like? Someone comment with from animal rights or if they think if, if, cause I don't know, I'm going to assume so that people could sleep at night, an animal, an animal rights activist can sleep at night that they actually know what the wild's about. I'm going to assume they do. I'm going to maybe give them more credit than they deserve. And I'm going to assume they, they completely understand and that they can completely watch this through it because they have to watch it. Through what's it. their, what's their, um, what's their game plan? Like, how are they going to, stop that from happening to that hippo that's what i want to know well, they're not the animal rights yeah no they I mean, don't care about that hippo yeah, but they don't care they want to shout you down because you went to the zoo that's all they care about they animal rights doesn't love deal? animals animal rights problem hates what? people is there a big zoo problem or no a huge zoo problem so explain the zoo thing so they're just against animal, all captivity yeah all captivity 
they're, they, they, they're, they're into euthanizing guys, dogs. Right? Yeah, yeah, there's a spectrum. Of course. I mean, animal rights has taken over the force for movement. It's an animal rights movement at this point. It's not a positive reinforcement movement. Animal they rights themselves has something completely different than animal taken, rights now. I don't know. There's some other word, I, animal welfare. Or oh, animal like welfare. That. Okay, animal welfare. And uh, that that hippo's welfare is not good. What a horrible world we live in, though. That if you think that's about it, better to them than that hippo being in a zoo. Just so you know. But dude, I'm that, not arguing it's not. I'm arguing they need to know. They need to know how how gnarly and hardcore and painful and hard on the mom to possibly watch that if she was. I don't know why she wouldn't be killing those hyenas if she was, but maybe she's too scared. I don't know. Maybe she's being killed right now. I feel like the hippo, the dad hippo, is, it would be like man on fire right now. I don't think bro. dads care. No? No. Dads it's kill. Heartbreaking. Dads often kill the baby, the babies. Why? They, hippos their are own, weird, dude. Their hippos own get like all crazy. Well, I don't know if you always know it's yours. That's why the mom will often like lions are the same way. Like the dad will sometimes just like get real aggressive with the baby and the mom's got to come in and he he knows it's his, but they're just so some animals are so aggressive. They don't, they it's don't like know the when to turn off. That's in. why the, the mom has to take the babies and they have to leave grizzly bears, right? They have to take the babies and they have to leave because the dad just kills on he gets sight. drunk, dude. And he just, yeah, that's act. exactly right. Just He's like act. drunk on, on aggression and they just kill things. It's so, but think of the world we live in where like this poor little uh, hippo yep. is like, no, you're just going to get eaten by five different oh, hyenas. And it's like, slowly. sorry, bro, you drew the old short end of the stick in life. Like, yeah, and you don't just get to die early. You have to deal like with the most excruciating pain. The, it's the as most you excruciating. Die. Like a lion gets him. It's still because he's a hippo. He's got a lot of fat like the lion would get, but it's pretty quick. What's not, so not weird, this. Hor horrific too, is it's like horrific. when they like he's he's getting like eaten at some point. He's like, okay, like I'm done for, right? Like, like remember we were watching right before this, yeah. we were watching that that um the coyote was going after that cat, mm -hmm. and like the cat's like at no point is the cat like I'm I'm done for. Like he's like I'm fighting for my life. And in case you guys might have seen this video, but it's basically there's like a house cat on a porch. And it's caught on like a blink or one of those kind of, kind of cameras. And the coyote comes in to get him. And this, cat, this cat fights back. fought back. Yeah. Tooth and nail. Yeah. It was, it's like a little, little, little coyote. Yeah. But Some, he, almost like in the south. But he wouldn't he wouldn't back down. And, and he eventually. But there are points where like in the wild or, you know, that's a nice thing about, I guess, civilization, right? Is like if your cat gets hurt, there is a chance. Like if you, you know, if it doesn't get killed. Back. Yeah. Like what are they going to do if. Like if you get hurt as a hippo, yeah, you die. Right, any animal, any there, broken, generally, any speaking. broken leg is death. Right. I just saw a video of a polar bear who had like a back broken leg, and it like, but then they found him later, and he's like doing good. Like, I don't know how. It's it's hard out there. I mean, you could start raiding trash cans and stuff, and but like, I don't know. How, you can't make it in the wild injured. Like, you have to get better or you die. Especially in Africa. Just think about how gnarly that is. That like, as an animal one leg break foot break potentially hand, you know hand whatever you'd call it for the animal is basically oh you're dead forever like when yeah. you know and think about how athletic those like cats are that they do like high risk stuff and they are yeah animals die fine. all the time i mean uh, that's why the 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 like the force free movement it's it's it baffles me a bit and maybe that's where i'm different like i've worked with wild animals i've seen so much and like it baffled me. Oh, the hyena is like eating his tail off. That's that bite right there. Like that tail feels something. It's like, I'm going to gnaw this thing off while this guy's alive. Um, the force free movement has this like a dog can never feel any stress. Like, like it's the only animal they think people can feel stress. They shout people down. They want people to feel stress constantly. They know that this hippo is going to feel the most amount of stress any animal in the history of animals has felt because of the slow death and the fact that he's a baby and he's wondering where his mom is. Yeah. But a dog, for some reason, cannot be put in any uncomfortable situation, but it only applies to the dog. Doesn't apply to people, doesn't apply to wild animals. It only applies to dogs. I don't, I but, don't get it. You know what's kind of weird, though? is I'm so repulsed by this like hippo getting eaten by these hyenas. And yet 
if you think about it, like what is the freaking hyenas doing other than eating meat, right? Yeah, they're, they're just doing, doing basically their thing. what everyone else does. They're not everyone on this channel, you know, eats meat, but probably the vast majority do. And so it's like, what's the difference? Is like we were mentioning before the podcast that like a um, mountain lion will just grab the jugular, right, and just kill it in two seconds, so it doesn't have this excruciating pain. Yes, but either way, it's eating it, right? And yes. so it's like we just there's something just visceral about hyenas and like this like and well, i think it's a fact that it's a, it's bad a small at it. it's a small yeah they're not good at killing they're right they're not good at killing they, it is a a group they don't they don't know how to do it what canines don't the, the the wild dogs there's so many of them that they they literally within like 10 seconds the animals disemboweled they'll go for the stomach but you know these guys are like you? on the other side of it like you know what i challenge you on though is that these africa you love when i challenge you on this stuff especially Africa stuff uh, is that these African animals are tough as hell, dude. Like even zebras dude, they're like hard to kill. Oh yeah. Like a lion gets it and it's like, nah, bro, I'm not bro, giving imagine up. Imagine Africa. You're like, Oh, the insects are trying to kill me. Everything I'm trying to kill is trying to kill me. I can't drink water without worrying about dying. The gators and the hippos, like they can't do it. the, Survival of Every, fittest, bro. You're born and everything is literally trying to kill you from the second you're born. If you're a mountain lion, like you gotta beware of wolves. You gotta beware of, you know, the the antlers of an elk you're trying to kill, but you probably just go for the females. You gotta be, but like you're out in the vast open. Africa is Africa's so so much harsher, it's huh? It's so much harsher. It's so brutal. It's pretty insane. I, I yeah, but the thing is, is even if you go like, there's also like the genetic lottery, like, oh, you know, you get born into a trust fund or, hey, I got born onto the savannah, I'm, a, I'm a, a lion. Well, there's bad parts for lions too, right? Like they, all their stories don't end well. What are you doing, sir? It's like, it's spilling all over. He's like go pouring ahead. water into his hand during the podcast. Um, but yeah, you think about like even a lion who you're like, if I had any, any choice, I'd want to come like as a lion on, yeah, on definitely the pride. Not. But then it's like, no, yeah, I'm sure there's still, a lot of glory there too, but then it's like, not all of them are like that. Right? A lion has the toughest. I've always said a male lion has the toughest life of any animal in the world. And why? Because, okay, you want to do this? You want to get into this, bro? All right. Here, you ready? Look at Joel's face I, I, for you audio folks. All right. <clears throat> he loves this stuff. So a male lion is born in the environment that I just said. Everything's trying to kill you, but not only everything. If you, so you're born, the buffalo and hyenas, they will try to just kill you instantly. If they find you, a you are buffalo? dead if you're a baby. Yeah, they, they want to kill you. They'll just eat you, right? They just They'll just stomp care. you and then the hyenas will eat you. But um, everything's trying to kill you. And then at about, let's say you're born or to like six months old. If your dad goes out, to defend from other lions and they kill him the male the new males will come in and kill you but the but which is very unique another lion that just happened to stumble upon him would kill him also yeah, as but, a baby yes but that's not that common like like the what's really common the females is, are watching is the right? male yeah the male goes out or the the he gets killed by males that want to breed with the females so they the the new male kills all the babies okay? that's super common right it happens every time a new male comes in which is pretty common right he kills the old dad and then it's often like two brothers will kill him and then they come in they kill all the babies Mufasa, okay. and then the, yeah okay great he's coming for simba so yes so now now you made it through that your dad's still alive okay cool he's not very nice to you but whatever that's life okay mom's nice and then dad goes okay now it's time to get out of here which isn't that odd your dad wants you to get a job basically. yeah dad wants you to get a job so you head out by yourself you're not the you're not that big and strong yet. You're just kind of a scraggly. You're like a teenager, one right? One year old, dude. So you're hunting one porcupines. One and a half, two. I mean, I don't know the exact age they get kicked out. Most of them, I'd say eighty percent of them die at that point. Okay. Should we go to Africa, bro? No. So then, so then, so then you head out. You, you, you probably die. But if you don't, oh, now guess what you got to do? You got to go find your own pride. Now you've been lucky enough to live. Now you have to go try to kill the male of another pride and he's not down to being killed. So if you live that, now you're like six years old. Okay. If you get through that, you get a few years, probably die at nine. 
of Where natural causes. You so you get a few years of humping and doing stuff and then you die. So can I that stop you for sucks. a second? So, so let's just say three, year four. Okay. How many of these innocent zebras and wildebeest, or not wildebeest, but uh, gazelles have you already killed in this process? But you're by yourself? Yeah. I don't know. Not, but you're not the best hunter. You're a big male. But like, you know, no one cares sc- sc- about the antelope. Yeah, right? no one does. Yeah. Like, it just doesn't bother us. It right? doesn't bother us. And it doesn't bother a lot of people. Yeah, I don't even, want to but, see it but, die. But, but, it's still a, hard to watch. But a dog, you're grabbing a dog saying, hey, you can't try to bite another dog. That terrifies people. <laughs> but like, the, 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 the meat that those people eat and the, and the, 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 metal spike going into the the cow's brain for them to eat their burger doesn't bother them in any way i think it's willful blindness is what it is i don't know what it is i think it's like i don't this, think they think about it yeah is that willful blindness yeah i think so I yeah think it's, or, they're, or they're just purposefully forgetting or they don't want to look at it it's kind of like cognitive dissonance right it's like they know deep down they know that like it's wrong hypocrites. it's not even wrong it's just that like it's in it's inconsistent it is cognitive dissonance because what they're all like say just super against all this like type of animal cruelty and stuff like that but they're also like going to jack in the box three times a day and yeah just crushing you know eating bacon cheeseburgers eat, eating grass-fed burger a, a a a metal cylinder still slammed into that cow's brain um but yet a dog cannot feel uncomfortable while you eat your burger I, I'm not understanding. Um, I think part of the problem is people who push back don't think in the right way. And we talked about that last week. It's time to push back in the way I think and in the facts that I have and not compare studies and not compare, no, I love animals more than you. No, you. I love animals more than you. This doesn't get us anywhere. The Does real the study pushback... Though? Does a study bring this baby hippo back to life? Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I mean, it's like you you don't even need a study to see how violent the wild is. I know we talked about this a bit last week, but for those at home, you home gamers out there, the purpose of this originally started on conversations on the phone where you're like, you were talking about Beckman Unleashed and like wanting to talk about like wild animals and like dogs too, but like wild animals and like, but the the thesis was like educating people on the like horrific reality. It's not like it happens to be horrific, but it's it is the reality of wild animals. Yes, that we just kind of forget happens. <laughs> yeah, until they visually see it, I guess. And I, I, and I don't have a problem with normal people going, yeah, the wa-, and I don't have a problem with normal people going, I don't want to watch this. If you're a force-free um, trainer, you better watch this hippo dying all the way through. Dude, hyenas? Because you, I don't, I, I mean, that might change your opinion if a dog can be grabbed and told no. I don't know. What would you do to that dog? What are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about this hippo? How about you? I mean, the poor hippo. Are, are we you, Are we worried about the hippo? What do you think about intervening? Like I saw uh, Rogan, it was like a short and Rogan was, commenting on it but it was basically that an octopus had gotten a bald eagle or something oh, like that, I saw right? that and then he was like they were like helping the bald eagle and he was like i don't know if i'm for that and yeah, i was thinking like hard. it is weird to think of like i'm for it like you're for saving the bald eagle yeah because you're american is that what's going on i like that? eagles and octopus are pretty successful like he'll move on and be fine <laughs> <I don't think laughs> he doesn't need call, to eat bro. an eagle it's, it's not definitely not my call <laughs> i don't care no. I'm saving a freaking eagle in the water flapping around from an octopus. That octopus would be fine. I mean, I'm saving it. Okay. Think about a, a tiger and a deer. Okay. Axis deer, the chittle deer, whatever they call it. Uh, axis deer in a, in a, in a, whatever the it doesn't traditional matter. tiger is, right? What about it, it? It has a hold of this, this deer. Like, we have the ability to get in there and break it up. Do we do that? No. I mean, there's it's then why not deer. with the octopus though? Because it's a bald eagle. Like what? Like <laughs> it's the freaking mascot of America. Although if you were it. in Puget Sound, you'd be like, let it die. There's bald eagles everywhere. Yeah, but I love them. I I've seen four bald eagles in the wild. I can tell you exactly where I was. I saw a bald eagle. You know that, right? In Montana. 
I took a picture of it. That's cool. I was with Mike and yeah. uh, the guy who's been mentioned on this podcast that doesn't get paid every time I mention him. Uh, I was sitting there. I was like, I was like, like looking, like just kind of spot and stuff. And I just, I just see all of a sudden, I'm just like, is that a bald eagle? And I, and I was just like, that'd be weird if it was a bald eagle. And I was like, stop the car real quick, go back up. And then I, you know, he's like, what? And I was like, did you see something? I'm like, I think I saw a bald eagle. And he was yeah. like, you might have. And I, and I was like, what is that? He's like, that's a bald eagle, bro. Yeah. We just thought we took pictures cool. and stuff like that. One of my trainers, we have turkey vultures everywhere in Southern California. They're like right out there. Like, no, they're everywhere. Yeah. They're black. They're big birds. Yeah. They're and they're monsters. black. And one of my trainers is like, oh, look at that eagle. And I'm like, bro, you think there's like eagles just flying around everywhere yeah. for your whole life? Like, Those eagles are, are very rare. Yeah. Except up, up in north. Puget Sound. Um, but like, if you saw a golden eagle or a harpy eagle and you're in South America or a Marshall eagle and you're in the Philippines, like, it's a big deal to see an eagle. Bro, this is a so giant deal. I like so get really up. excited. It says nature on PBS. The title is Young Young Hippo Mourns Mother's Death. That's so heartbreaking. Oh, yeah. Bro. And they'll just stay there forever until they die of dude, starvation. It's like separation anxiety and brings a tear to my eye, dude. I'm like, at first I thought it was the mom. And then I'm like, yeah. oh, the, the young hippo is like, oh, my mom's dead. Yeah. No, but that, that you know, uh, parent, I like, no problem with painful long deaths but you, like can't, you can't grab it you can't you can't tell a dog no do they, do, what do you think about <laughs> i know we talked thing. about this last week but like what do you think about lion king like do they get it more right than they get wrong i don't know i feel like they educated us a bit on like i've obviously like he doesn't get born and get like thrown up in the air you know what i mean well like, like there's a baboon who's like smart baboons are smart there's a hornbill that's the bird mm -hmm. zazu zazu and hornbills are actually super smart they're okay. really smart animals. Um, you know, there's a big, a dumb boar or something, or a wild hog, and then there's a meerkat. And I mean, there would know. be this scar in Mufasa. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. That would be real, right? There, there's no alliance from a brother to a brother. Even for uh, no, there tigers is. too, right? No, in lions there is. They cruise around and they they fully like share food and they share mates. But even at even at like the toward the end of their life when they have their own pride, they don't do that. At, yeah, they like they? stick around. Yeah, they'll just. It's brother, it's like uh, yeah, they they stay together. It's like Jeb Bush or something. It's like you got like your whole little crew out there. Yeah, really. Yeah, I thought they would have been gone by then. No, lions. Like, I think it's such a harsh world. They sort of know together we're better, and then they still don't really. But tigers seem to know, fight. or you don't know about tigers much. No, tigers. Yeah, they just they just they just they're just more solitary by nature. Did you see there was like one like some type of thing which was like four? It was like four tigers, and they were born. And I think like National Geographic or something followed those four around. And they stuck together? Um, for a while, I think they were trying to hunt and stuff, but then yeah. eventually they went out. It was like a big series or something. No, I didn't see it. it. That's like the first thing. But like thing in a zoo, seeing. you can have tigers together. They'll, they'll get along. Yeah. I was talking to you on this podcast. I like, forgot we were on a podcast. I was just like uh, talking about, that's what's so great about Africa. That's why I'm like afraid to go there because I'm like, like, it's just crazy to think about like, like going there just seems dangerous, a bit dangerous to go there. It right does. Now. I think that sometimes, but then like, it's a big place. Like there yeah. are dangerous yeah. places and not dangerous places, but then it's a like giant continent, my brother-in-law, he's been to like the Congo. And, like he's like, like there's like a, that's why like, the gorillas, like he's been, I would to never go there. South Africa. What is it? Namibia, like all these places. And he's like, right next to a lion and stuff like all these wild animals and he just like going out there just <laughs> bro i just saw a video of the people tent camp in africa and the lions came up and they were licking the water off the tent you can google it right now it's really popular right now this video they were licking the water off yeah the tent. people were filming from inside the tent and the lions were licking the water off the tent the dew from the morning yeah. like a free water source yeah whatever it is i'm I'm not cool in that. T I have three kids. They want to, they should have built a Boma. Like 25 years ago, I might've done that. Kids change your life. You go, my life is worth, oh, a hundred times more than 10, 15 years ago. 20? Yeah. I mean, you're worth, you're worth like $25 back in your twenties. Yeah. You? But the money, it, the, the money doesn't matter. The, 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 a lot of lives change if I die. Not yeah. just the viewers. No, yeah, dude, the dogs are gonna be out no, of my control. Kids. Yeah, the there's gonna be out of control dogs. If kids I are gonna be running up no, and down the kids, streets. No, but kids, the kids, like it's it's you know, it's not just me anymore.
I'm not going where lions I hope are. You have life insurance, bro. I'm not going where bears are. I'm not hiking. If dude, I wouldn't go where you go in Montana and like walk around. My buddy, I wouldn't. Same guy who are not paying him for. I used sex. to swim in with on killer whales, but I did I had no children. This guy, this, I heard this yesterday. This guy, so Mike, the guy we just talked about, he sent me something, and it was his friend, and they, this is like deep in Montana, and they were doing an elk call, and he killed a bear, and he like that. He said the bear was like five feet from him, like. Like he thought it was a wild animal, came at him, and like he almost um and he had to kill the bear. this guy. And he had to kill the bear. And I'm sure there's a bunch of animal rights wants him that. to die. No, what's up with this fishing game and like remember Cecil? Them like opening like investigations into like like hey, you see that bear, and then you see these grass marks where I was. How there's your investigation. No, so there's a it's deep. So the guy we're talking about, he actually people most many people would rather that guy died. Then but, that bear died. You know that, right? Well, I'm sure they would. There many people. Yeah. I mean, as long as I'm not the one that dies, right? But the thing is, is if you think about like it, it's they have so Department of Fish and Game and all the different fish and wildlife and all this type of names that they have, they have a tough job because you have things like uh uh what would you call it? Like um cougars, you've got different types of bears, and so people want to kill these things. No, not most people don't. Like I think. I don't know anybody who's like, oh, I would just go poach something, right? So that's, I don't know those people, but I'm sure they exist. And I'm talking just in America, like in, you know, normal hunting circumstance, but Good people point. do kill these animals. And so like they go out and hunt, uh, hunt a, um, you know, like a, whatever, a cougar. And then if they get caught, they're like, oh, it was trying to kill me. Or you try to kill a bear because you don't have a tag. And now that's why I said though, like, hey, you see all the grass? That's because I was sitting here. And yeah. that's the bear. Like it's, it's kind of, it seems quick to me. The investigation seems no, pretty quick. So my buddy, he, he had shot a bear and this is a different thing, but he had shot a bear. And then I guess what had happened his his friend was skinning. He probably, gonna get are we annoyed. lacking bears by the way? Uh, no, not normally. Like, we, I mean, because like there's, there's trip like out that like there's, there's like a very comprehensive, like yeah, wildlife. Plan there's a lot for, of bears for every state has their own wildlife plan. And they'll have like, this is the amount of bears. That's why they hunt bears. Like they, some places do and don't hunt grizzlies, but, um, it's like the shark thing, you, like New Mexico, like you can hunt bear. I mean, they hunt them every year. It's, it all depends on how many right, bears right, there right, are. Right. Like there's, it's, it's tags, it's a balance. Yeah. So, okay. but he ended up shooting a bear and his buddy was cleaning like an elk or something. And so the bear's like, I smell elk. Yeah, and yeah, he goes in there the and he charges at him. And our friend was like in the military and went to war and stuff like that. And, yeah. I was like, oh crap. And then got him. And I, I think he said he spent like like the next six months was like at That's the what department I'm fishing about. game. That's what I'm talking explaining about. Explaining himself and doing that type of stuff. Which yeah. nothing I don't think ever happened of him. But and I so I respect their their hustle. Dude did. Yeah, yeah. That hey, we need to make sure if some if some guy kills an animal, we should definitely make sure he's legit and it was like a life and or you know, he was defending yeah. himself. Yeah. You know, I get I it. Just saw this uh, last thing I'll say. There's probably some red tape involved that could maybe speed up the process. Pro probably. <laughs> but the last, the last thing I'll say about this is that, that or the uh, red tape would slow down the process. I and mean, if we got rid of the red, it, it seems pretty open and shot to me, but okay, yeah, I mean, whatever. it's like, it's like kind of, I guess the point is like, do you have to prove you're innocent or do they have to prove you're guilty? Exactly. Kind of you know, that's like, my point. Yeah. That's a I good guess. point. But I don't know if you saw that one. I don't know if it was a Rogan thing or not, but where the mountain lion was, the guy had a Glock and the mountain lion was like six feet from him. And then he shot, the, he shot it. And, um, I was like, Whoa, but I think he didn't show it as he was shooting it because I think it was trying to get at him. But I mean, it was way too close. Like it was like maybe 10 feet, six to 10 feet away from him. it was so close. And then he shot him. So he had the video evidence, which is good. Cause I've seen people go, well, why are you videotaping it? Like, why don't you get out of there? And he's like, I'm videotaping it. Cause I have to do something yeah. that I have proof. That I, I do was... feel, you know, there are some animals, bear and sharks is where you give a little leeway, like a mount, Not a mountain lot. Yeah. But what's the, what's the death? I mean, how many people are killed by mountain lions? Like it's easy for you to say, what if it's your daughter, daughter out there hiking, bro? You're going to yeah. be like, Hey, right. Yeah. I mean, let's, yeah. let's a just bear is put them into mountain lion. cold hearted, like killer. Like a grizzly bear is very different than mountain lion. In my yeah. Opinion. They're, they're more, I think you're much more likely to get killed by probably any bear, but I mean, obviously grizzlies are much yeah. tougher, but aren't polar bears worse than that's what they say. But you don't believe this. No, just... I don't believe it for one reason. Why? Well, I guess there's the, 
the the nature the 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 killing of a human but then the toughness level they did this apparently these grizzlies moved north and where the polar bears butted up against and the grizzlies kind of came up slowly guess who left polar bears the polar bears left and the grizzlies stayed yep grizzlies polar bears are, are like monsters, i want though. no smoke with a grizzly but you're like oh they're the biggest they also eat seals and grizzlies eat full grown moose grizzlies might be probably more aggressive because they have to be like aggressive like powerful i don't know i don't know if um if we're able to see this or not but this guy who is in san diego he went on a um archery hunt and he owns like a archery business thing he got a grizzly bear with an uh, a bow and arrow and it was so big it didn't even seem like it was real like it's stuffed or whatever I see that picture and is you're that like it? yeah and it's don't like bring it up. no i'm not going to but like there was one where it's actually stuffed in the store and you're like, that's not real. Like it can't, a grizzly bear can't be that big. Yeah. It's, Isn't that insane? That was big. Like it looks like it's 12, 15 feet tall. Yeah. You know I'm kind of think if you should, if you hunt, you sh it should like be quick. And I don't know how quick bows are. Yeah. From what I understand, it's pretty quick. Okay. The, I will clarify. I want it to be quick, a quick death if it's going to happen. Yeah, just in my opinion. I, no, I mean, I think we're 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 advocating that all of these things should be quick deaths, right? So I like, yeah. like the the hyenas need to do a better job. They do the baby. <laughs> I feel bad for the baby. baby hippo. Is that crazy? No. Well, what I didn't what I didn't realize about um, bow hunting because I don't know that much about it is that I guess like because of the 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 broadheads that they use is that like when yeah, they hit the target good. like they're gonna hit it in the vitals like it's gonna die. Yeah, like uh, obviously, but I do believe you from a animal welfare perspective, right? You you can't. It's hard to say that a um, you don't have much better odds with a rifle than a yeah than a bow. I think that's fair to say. Yeah, let's um, we're we're almost at that time. What else we got on the list? Anything? Did you oh. apologize? Did you make any apologies? Yeah, apologize to you for for saying for that wrong. my uh, ten thousand rats. Your ten thousand rats wouldn't beat mine. You yeah, were right. You were, you were right off. And then right. comments, and then that's it. Okay, and I apologize for thinking that a man with a rifle could beat fifteen hawks, right? 15, yeah. However many hawks it was. Your man a with a rifle, yeah. It or even, even the wolves. I'll tell you, there are a few people that probably had a rifle that you'd want going, but your average person with a rifle is worthless. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, so Sybil. From Sybil, Turkey. She's a from Sybil. Turkey. Let me see a picture. She comments all the time. Let I can't. I, I screenshotted it, so it's not going to let me see her. Uh, no, I just see that picture. No, oh. that's her. Sybil. She com she comments all the time. Oh, okay, she's okay. awesome. Okay, so Sybil says, uh, "Gosh, how I love these podcasts." Also, when you guys were talking about the Anatolian Shepherd, you did not think about the Kangal, right? Very similar, yet not the same breed. Both made in Turkey just yeah. like me laugh out loud that's when i realized like she might oh. be from turkey yeah she might she might she might live in turkey she's playing it on pretty thick there right yeah she's a she's awesome she's been commenting for years so this is this kind of shows where i'm at uh on the woke spectrum so it starts off it says alt it's a l t t and it says he slash him pronounced alt as this. in alter and i thought what the hell is this guy talking about? I know, I didn't understand. But then point. I was like, oh, he's saying he's a him or a he. That way, when we read the comment, we know that it's a oh, guy. Because we always don't know. Yeah. Okay. Pretty smart. It's, it's a guy. And then the next thing he said was pronounced alt as an alter because that way you could say his name's alt. Oh, people care if because we probably say their names wrong and call them boys and girls no but he solved both problems i know now we know it's all but they he's a guy by that statement we know they care yeah they, they want us to say it right Go you don't ahead. have to put your pronouns uh that's completely optional. no but that's good but, but because I, now we know but i mean literally when i was reading it i was like i didn't understand no. what was happening all so right what did he say he said hey very engaging podcast i was wondering if you guys could discuss how coddling and reassuring a dog when they're scared affects them I failed repeatedly to convince my family that petting, hugging, and telling the dog it's okay is making her severe anxiety worse. Any advice on explaining why this is counterproductive or perhaps you don't agree with my line of thinking either, but either way, I'd love to hear your opinion on it. So the first thing I thought of, uh, right, right, he said, trying to explain to his family, 
here's here's what the best way to reinforce if you're how, questioning whether the touching and the hugging it's okay is helpful you're questioning it for a reason so here's the thing to do they're on a leash or i don't know they're going to be on a leash if i don't know why they're all worried at home so let's assume you're out in the world hey you're a good boy everything's okay you're a good boy let's go see the tone of that is sort of reinforcing. It's reassuring. I got things under control. You don't have to worry. The touching is is a weird thing that can and should be done at moments. But if you're if you're questioning it, you're questioning it for a reason because you don't think it's working or it's made it worse. So do something else. That makes that kind of almost brings me back to the point you had about, um, like the father thing in the house is like the father is able to reassure. Yeah. Um, and imagine like if you're afraid, like you're a kid and you live with your mom, like you're single, like I've been, lived it with my mom by myself when I was a kid and Me stuff too. like that with my sister. And so like, you know, like something knocks on the door, right? You're a little more afraid, yeah. right? Whereas like if your dad's there, you're like, he's like, Hey, it's okay, dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're so right. I was just thinking about that today. Like anything that happens in my house, my wife is like, Oh my God. And she like <laughs> trips out and I'm all, everything's cool. Everybody. And if it was just like, if, if kids only got that, you that wouldn't be great. You don't think of the underlying fear that like being afraid in your own house could potentially have on a kid because they're like, you know, they have maybe more anxiety or whatever, but if they have like some crazy, like military dad, that's like just, you know, like special forces and stuff like that, he's probably not that worried about the guy coming to the door. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like. One thing that I don't know, I'm sure you've seen this, but for those at home, um, the Sebastian Monoscolo thing about the the door knock, right? Yeah, yeah, is like one of, the funniest, one of the funniest things on the internet, yeah. right? You should Sebastian Maniscalco door knock, yeah. The Google difference it. between now and in the you old have days, two um, 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 co comedians to Google today, yeah, Louis C.K. Maniscalco, Maniscalco. Yeah, Me but my family watching, yeah. If you just type in a doorbell or something like that, yeah. door, you know, Sebastian front door. doorbell. It is. It's it's it one of the best good. things I've seen in the last really 10 years. Okay. It made him famous. Yeah, that was fantastic. So I'll skip this one because I'm not in the mood to uh, get into that stuff. <laughs> Mrs. V. Grace. Positive reinforcement only training is bullshit. <laughs> there needs to be some consequences for bad behavior. Joel's method wor methods work, period. Love the video and podcast. My last four dogs have been Doberman, St. Bernard, Husky, Chow, Mix, um, etc. For leash reactivity, the gentle leader is working even better than the halty. Loving it. Keep rocking it. P.S. My Beckman pint glass is awesome quality. I didn't even read. I saw that first line. Didn't read it. Positive reinforcement only as training is bullshit. I just <laughs> screenshotted it and moved on. So some of these I haven't totally, um, read. totally read. But yeah. any comments on that before I move to the next one? I forgot because I started talking about the pint glass, which you have right there, or thinking about it. So what did she say? Um, she said... Um, Oh, oh, positive reinforcement. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not rock science. Like, there's a group of people out there who are telling you, like, the sky isn't blue. <laughs> like, it's really that, like, force-free. They're, they're like, only use force-free. Everything else is nonsense. That's the same as saying, like, hey, the sky isn't blue. And you guys are like, oh, okay. Like, oh, where's the, where's the proof of force-free working with that aggressive dog? We don't have it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't exist. Well, but you're telling me that this is the way. Well, think but about where's it. the video? Yeah, it it doesn't exist. They won't say it doesn't exist. They just expect you to. They're just saying like the sky's not blue. But think about why it wouldn't exist. Think about this for a second. Yeah, think about that. Think about this. This is like this is something that should go in the book or something if we write a book, right? It's like this idea of of saying like um, force free, right? So imagine you have someone going down the street using force. So they're just like walking up, just bam, just punching people in the face left and right, right? Which dogs do. Yeah. So, I mean, they're doing that in their own way. So you think about it and go, well, what is the, you know, what is the deal? Do you have to? Can you I got to go. Oh, are you going to get in trouble? Yeah. Okay. I like have to go. Uh oh. Joel's wife is calling. Yeah. That is like the end of the no, show. No, I have to be at the doctor. Okay. Like, tell the people you love them. Love you guys. All, all right. right. Go. We got to go. That's all she wrote today. Short okay. one. Bye. Bye. Short one.